So Zim, great to be on a stage with you again. So it was a year since you were here at the ATP Co. Elevate Conference and you won with Volantio. Yes. Um, so for folks in the audience, in case anyone doesn't know uh, what Volantio is, if you've ever, uh, you know, about three days or three hours before a flight gotten an offer from an airline to rebook to another flight in exchange for some money, uh, the tech behind that was probably powered by Volantio. Um, and uh, we were talking backstage and Azim was mentioning that, you know, many people in this room have focused on revenue managing up to the moment of booking and Volantio is sort of taking it to the next stage. So what, what would you have to say about that, Azim? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been incredibly exciting for us to see over the last year, um, most specifically zeroing in on the value that we're driving for airlines because a year ago uh, that wasn't entirely clear yet because we didn't have enough data back. But today, you know, we're seeing anywhere on the low end of 10 cents up to 30 cents per in plane passenger in terms of just profit, straight to the bottom line for airlines every time, every day. Um, yeah, it's a mind-blowing number. Yeah, and it's, it's pretty amazing. That's not just on flights that they take action on. That's on their, um, you know, that's, that's system-wide. So that's pretty cool. Cool. So you win a lot. I last saw you a, a year ago at the Skiff Global Forum where you got the Accenture Amadeus competition. I saw you in March in Madrid where you scoped up another uh, a competition win. So what's the true value for a startup of you know, participating in these kinds of events? Yeah, I would just probably zero in on two things uh, in the uh, interest of, of brevity. I mean, I think the first is profile and visibility. Um, you know, when you run a startup and when you work at a startup, you, you work for a lot of time, kind of what it feels like in the shadows. Uh, it's very, very, very hard to get people to listen to you. I've, uh, you know, I, I would say, you know, when 90% of emails get ignored, when you want to try to talk to people, it's tough. Um, so winning a, an award like that really sort of gets people to, to know at least, uh, you know, who you are. So that's the first thing. The, uh, the second thing is really kind of um, education for the industry around the value of what you do, you know, um, and, and having that ability. That's one of the th key things that we've seen that's come out of winning those awards is the opportunity to talk and, and really evangelize about, hey, there's this awesome thing out there and that, um, you know, maybe you, you haven't had the opportunity to take advantage of it yet, but here's a startup, um, you know, that, that can help you do that. So, you know, for us, you know, maybe a year ago, um, there was not a lot of clarity in this space, but today, luckily, after winning these two awards or three awards, you know, we've really established ourselves as the undisputed leader uh, in the space of, of post-booking revenue optimization, which is what we're doing. So that's, that's pretty exciting. Cool. Uh, so Volantio has taken corporate venture capital from uh, JetBlue, uh, IAG, Qantas, uh, most recently Amadeus. So what is your strategic thinking there? Yeah, look, I mean, it's obviously a dual-edged sword um, to take uh, uh, capital from, you know, the, the, the industry. I mean, we've been fortunate we've gotten backed by the four largest corporate venture capital arms that are, that are out there. Um, and, you know, we were very thoughtful and careful around taking that money. Um, I think the things that you get, so in terms of the, the pros, is, you, you know, you get uh, credibility. Um, you get connections from the, the folks there that are able to make introductions for you. Um, and, and most recently for us, you know, at least through the partnerships that we've had with Amadeus and others, that you really had a lot of help um, on the product side as well mm -hmm. to really think through um, what, what, what do we need to be doing to, to really um, elevate, to use a word, uh, you know, <laughs> what it is, you know, um, you know our product. Um, I would say on the con side, it's very time-consuming, um, raising capital, especially from corporates. Um, they're not as uh, nimble, uh, I would say, as the typical venture world. They can take their time. As I mentioned, we were fortunate. Uh, the, these firms looked at us and a number of our competitors, and they chose us, and we're very humbled by that. Um, but, uh, but, but that's definitely a con, the time it takes. And the second thing I would just say is that um, our advice to the startups out there that are looking at doing this is don't take uh, corporate venture capital from one firm if you're going to do it. It's better to get no corporate venture capital than get it from one firm because then they kind of own you. Um, whereas, so so, yeah. so if, you're, if you're tied to one supplier, then other suppliers might not want to work with you? Is that the idea? Or? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or they can start extracting most favored nation clauses and other sort of funny business. And, okay. and we were very clear um, because we had four people backing us. We said, look, we can't. We can't do that, and that was very, very helpful to have a bit of a bulwark uh, against each each other 
and everybody plays pretty well together in the sandbox um, when we have four people together. Okay. So I was talking this morning with uh, Gianni from Bridge Labs, which is uh, ATP Co's sort of interface between the startup community and airlines, as we've, we're hearing today you know, over this conference about the work that they do with dozens of companies. Uh, so in the past six years, like, there, there's been this dramatic growth from like five to about 23 accelerators, incubators, mentoring sort of programs. What is your advice either on the startup side or from the, the, the organizer side about how to make the most of these opportunities? Yeah, so just a couple words to the startups. I think the most important thing that we've found to be useful, and again, I'm not saying that we're the experts yet. We're fortunate to have had a little bit of, of success here, but um, uh, is just be really focused. Uh, you know, there's startups, some of them are competitors of ours that want to try to do, you know, six different things. They say, well, you know, we're going to build chatbots, we're going to build this, we're going to build that, you know, but we, we really think that it, it's important to be very focused on, on one thing and to do it really well, and that's what we've done. So in terms of working with the corporates, if you're very focused on one sort of core value uh, area, we found that to be useful from the startup side. Um, from, from the corporate side, I think the, the question is, are you, are you, do you really want to do this? Or is this just a nice press release that you're putting out? You know, what is the true purpose of what you want to do? Because we've seen it both ways. We've seen uh, corporates that have, have made this investment but then ultimately kind of shut it down or something. And we have seen others that have actually stuck it out. And the ones that have stuck it out have focused on the things that are be under the hood that are most important to innovation, things like procurement and contracting. And, um, and, and, uh, you know, and, and all the processes that are required to like, bring startups in, like the, the messy stuff like indemnity clauses and <laughs> limitations of liability. You know, we've tried to talk to large airlines that have said they want unlimited liability from our company. We're never going to be able to do that, which means that they're never going to be able to bring us in. So that's my advice to those startups. Go talk to your procurement departments in other areas and see if they're going to be able to actually, if they really wanted to, to innovate. Mm -hmm. um, and at the la my last point, and this is a very simple one on that, that area, is that it right. starts at the top. You know, mm -hmm. I would say IAG's probably done the best um, uh, work. At the top, you mean like C-suite structure? Yeah, mm -hmm. like, and that really comes from Willie. Uh, mm -hmm. Willie Walsh said that he wanted Hangar 51 to be successful, and um, you know, in our experience, it, it has been. Um, and that's why it continues today, and it's, it's, it's kind of a model. Um, and, and we've done a number of them, so we really speak very highly of that. Okay. Um, do, how often in these programs do you actually interact with the other uh, startups that are participating, or is it much really one on one? Uh, f with the other startups, frequently, like um, uh, Megacore that's here, mm -hmm. you know, Abir, he and I, you know, we, we saw each other quite frequently, and they have got like a pretty cool. Megacore is also in IAG's Hangar Yeah, they were in Hangar 51 mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we've, we've done, we've, you know, we have interacted quite a bit with the other startups, and it's great because you get a chance to see all the cool things that. That that um, you know that everyone is is doing. Um, so uh, you know, there's a lot of really awesome. It's just a really cool community, and I think everybody's very supportive of one another. Everybody wants everyone else to do well. Mm -hmm. um, we certainly feel that way about you know all the other companies, and even in certain cases when we've had competitors, we've we've, re we've referred them on other products to uh, companies of ours that we know are looking for things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's cool. Uh, I guess I'll close by going back to the top of what you were talking about. You know, it's a challenge. You know, what's the true value of these things? You could be, you know, focusing on the fundraising, focusing on product development, hiring, and other yeah. things, and to spend time doing these events. And a year ago, when the Bridge Labs uh, contest was happening, was just shortly after uh, y your wife gave birth to your first child. Yeah, yeah. You know? so that's <laughs> exactly. Very cool. So, what was that conversation like? Was you're talking to your spouse to say, "I'm now going to leave you with this newborn and go off and and." <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was, you know, it was, it was challenging. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, she said that if you're going to go to the competition that I had to win. Uh, otherwise, you know, I shouldn't come back. So it was a little bit Spartan, uh, you know, like come back on, you, you know, dead or whatever, you know. Um, no, but it was good. We had, we, you know, uh, I mean, you raise a serious point. When you run a startup, you, you make a ton of sacrifices and, you know, that's one of the ones that, that, you know, that we've had to really balance over the last year, which is trying to raise, a, you know, a newborn, but also me being on the road probably, you know, 200 days of the year, you know, but... Mm -hmm. um, Understood. Yeah. It we makes just have a to lot make of sense. it work. Sure. Well, Azim, thank you so much. I'm going to introduce our, our next speaker, but Thanks. thank you. Azim Brodoiwala, thank Thanks. you so much. Yeah. From Valantio.